The topic that we've been looking at is redemption. Redemption means to buy back something that originally belonged to you but was taken away by deception. You're buying it back by paying a full price legally. I repeat, something which belonged to you, it was taken away by you by deception. And now you are paying a full price to buy it back legally. So that no matter what, it belongs to you now. Nobody can take it away. That is redemption. That is what Jesus did. A full understanding of redemption is very important for every believer to be effective in his spiritual life, to be a blessing for others. So some of the topics that we're going to learn in this are the purpose of creation, the nature of the human being, the fall of uh, mankind, the nature of spiritual death, why we need a mediator, the substitutionary work of Christ, our identification work in Christ, the attributes and character of the new creation. And we've been looking at these topics. We've finished the purpose of creation. We understood that the universe was made for the earth. The earth was made for man and man was made for God to bring pleasure to God so that because God needed a family. God made man in his own image. He did not look anywhere else for inspiration. He, he, he made man in his own image so that he can have fellowship with them. You can only have a real face-to-face -face fellowship with someone who is of your own class. I have dogs at home. I cannot have fellowship with my dogs the same way I have fellowship with my fellow human beings. No. No. Why? Because the dogs, they are of a different class of beings. We are created in the class of God. We are made in the same class and category as God is. He created in his own likeness and his own image. That's why we can have fellowship with God. That's the purpose of creation. The whole purpose of, of creation. Why God made everything else. The universe was made for the earth, the earth was made for man, and man was made for God, to have fellowship with God, to rule and reign in this life on this earth, the same way God rules and dominates the rest of the universe. Hallelujah. In Psalms 115 verse 16, it says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Why? The same manner that God rules the universe, man is supposed to rule the earth. Man was made as a God of this earth. It is not so right now. Why? We're going to look at that. So, if you see in creation, man was the last of God's creation. Why? Because he prepared everything, made everything, saw it was good, and then finally he made man. Everything was created. Everything done. Then he put, created man, put him in the garden of Aden. Why? So God can fellowship with him. God walked with man in the garden of Aden. He was having fellowship with him. Father to son fellowship. A relationship. And we saw the nature of man. How man was made. He's a three-part being. The real man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. God is a spirit. John 4 says. God is a spirit and the real man is a spirit. That's a part of man that came from God. When God created Adam, he formed Adam's body from the dust of the earth and he breathed into Adam's nostril the breath of life. That is the spirit. The same word breath is pneuma. It's the same thing for spirit. Breath. Adam's spirit came from God. God took that lifeless body that he made of the earth and he said, Adam, when he spoke, just like he spoke everything into creation, when he said that word, Adam's spirit was released from God into Adam's body. And the moment his spirit came in contact with his body, the soul was formed. The soul contains your mind, your intellect, your will, your emotions. With your spirit, you communicate to God. With your soul, you control the body and you communicate to people. 
Uh, we've studied all this in uh, spirit, soul, and body. Just a recap for you to understand, because we need to re refresh this as we go into the rest of the topic today. So, man's body is is the house for his spirit. You need a body that came of the earth to make changes on the earth. Without a body that is of the earth, you cannot accomplish anything on this earth. That's why even Jesus had to come in the flesh. To fulfill his destiny, he needed a body that is of the earth. So your body is the house of your spirit and the Holy Spirit. The moment you are born again, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. Scripture says, don't you know, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, a house, a dwelling place for your Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So that's spirit, soul and body. Now, when Adam was created, his spirit came from God. His spirit was in communion with God. His spirit was joined with the life of God. The life in his body came from his spirit, which was joined with God. But the moment he disobeyed, that life was cut off. So that's what we're going to look at today. The fall of mankind. The fall of the human person. Let's go to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. We'll read from verse 1 onwards. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Wow. I know you've read this before, but we're going to see a lot of new stuff here. Right now, we know in whose image man was created God's image, exactly like God, the very image of God, exactly like Him. Now, I want you to look at this. Let's go to I know you've read this. Go to Genesis chapter 2. We'll read verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he formed. Alright. Now, look at this. God made Adam in his image. Planted a garden. And he put man in that garden. Look at that. He put the man whom he had formed in the garden of Eden. All right. Now, verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. Why? To tend and keep it. To tend and keep it. Now, if you have a garden at home, how will you tend and keep the garden? Definitely, you have to touch it. You have to prune the garden. To take care of any plant, you will definitely have to touch it. Right? Okay. Now the next verse. And God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. When did God give him this instruction? After he put him in the garden of Eden. And what was his purpose in the Garden of Eden? To take care of the garden. To take care of the trees. To, to tend it. Tend means to nurture it. Now, God said you, can, you are free to eat of all the fruits of all the trees. Except the fruit of one tree. 
that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he is not supposed to eat the fruit of that one tree imagine this is a huge garden a garden created and planted by god that means it's not in the 30 40 square foot uh, region it's huge it's god size so it's a huge garden and obviously there're going to be hundreds and thousands of trees there and adam is supposed to take care of all all of them but and eat the fruit of all of them except this one tree but did god say you are not supposed to touch this tree no no he didn't you're supposed to take care of that tree but not just eat the fruit of that tree now after this verse 17 verse 18 the lord god said it is not good that man should be alone i will make him a helper comparable to him look at that after he gave him the instruction to take care of the garden and not to eat the fruit of that tree then he made eve eve was not present when the god, when god put him in the garden of eden and the instruction was given eve came later into the picture and after that in verse 19 says out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field every bird of the air brought them to adam look at that god made all the animals and what did he do he brought them to adam why to see what he would call them and whatever adam called each of the living creature that was its name so adam gave names to all cattle for to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field but for adam there was found no helper comparable to him right before we come to the helper part let's look at this what did adam do he gave names to all the animals the actual meaning is the word call means to give characteristics so whatever character adam gave to them that became their nature every animal so that means adam knew every animal in the garden he knew their characters right now it's after this that god created eve as you read from verse 21 to 25 right that's when god created eve now let's come back to chapter 3 now let's review what you read look at this the serpent says was more subtle the new king james says was more cunning than any beast of the field which the lord god has made doesn't adam know that then adam know the character of every animal that was there adam knew it he is the one who gave them the character all right and now this serpent is speaking to the woman has god indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden i want you to think about this where was adam when the serpent was talking to her if you continue reading as we read in verse um, 6 when the woman saw the tree was good for food pleasant to the eyes the tree desirable to make one wise she took of his fruit and ate and ate and she also gave to her husband with her that means adam was right next to eve when this serpent started talking to her and started tempting her so then adam know that hey me and my wife we are the only creatures that are supposed to talk here he knew the character of all the animals there what was he supposed to do he was supposed to command it to shut up and tell it to get out see when you read genesis 1 what did god do to man he blessed them genesis 1:28 god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over every living thing that moves on the earth adam had authority adam was right there with eve when the temptation was happening right there with her scripture notes it what was he supposed to do exercise the authority that he had he should have said Shh, you're not supposed to be talking get out god had direct fellowship with adam 
Adam knew exactly the instructions that God had given him. He kept quiet when his wife was speaking to the devil. Look at this. Let's look at that conversation right now. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit. That's verse two. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the gar a garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, all right, she is quoting God. All right. You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, she thinks she is quoting God. But did God actually say you shall not touch it? Did God say that? No. God didn't say that. Where did she get that from? From Adam. Why? Because Adam did not instruct her correctly. As a husband, it was his responsibility to instruct his wife, give her the correct instructions. He was like most men. When you take your wives for shopping, you tell them, hey, don't even go there. When you see that there is a sale sign there, and especially when it looks colorful and attractive, you tell them, hey, let's not go there. That's not for us. Why? You don't want her to go there and you don't want her to start spending money there. So you just completely avoid that, that, that location. Does it sound familiar? That's what... Adam was doing. Where did you get that nature from man? From Adam. Adam said, hey, you don't even touch. Don't even bother. Don't go there. Don't touch it. God said, don't touch it. All right. Am I making sense? Now, what did she say? You will, you will die. We saw in Genesis chapter 2, let's go there again, when God gave the instructions. In verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. When we studied spirit, soul and body, we saw that this word surely die is actually a mistranslation. In the original Hebrew, it is written, you will die and die again. The word die is used twice. The word moth, moth. It is used twice there. He said, you will die and die again. You will die first and because of that death, you will die again. What is the death he's talking about? Spiritual death. Spiritual death. Because you, when you look at it, when you read the rest of the story, we see that Adam lived for 900 years physically. But the day he ate the fruit, he died spiritually. God said, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. When God says, you will die, you will die. What death was it? Spiritual death. Some translations say, in dying, you will die again. In dying, you will die again. That means you will die once, then because of that, you will die again. That's what happened. God told this to Adam directly. Now, he told Eve, when you eat of it, you will die. He didn't explain it to her. And then what happened? Let's go to chapter 3 again. The serpent, in verse 4, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Look at this. The devil is opposing God's word. And then he continued, for God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, my question to you, in whose image was man made? God's image, exactly like God, exactly like God. There was only one difference. Man was made to know only good, not evil. God knows what is good and evil. But when he made his children, he made them to know good. Why? Any parent, if you have children, if you have children, what would you prefer your children to know, good or evil? Good, right? Where did you get that nature from? You got it from God. God, as a loving parent, wanted his children to know only good. Evil was not God's plan for man. Not just doing evil, even knowing about it. 
Hallelujah. But God gave man a choice. God gave man a choice. He said, look at this. The serpent is saying, God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. You will be like God. They were already like God. How was Satan made? Who was Satan? Satan was known as Lucifer. Who was he? One of the angels of God. Probably the leader of praise and worship in heaven. The Bible said he desired the throne of the Most High. Pride came in. He wanted to be like God. But he was not like God. Angels were not created to be like God. They were not created in God's image. But he wanted to be like him. That's why they were jealous of mankind when man was made in God's image. Adam was made in God's likeness, God's image. Man had the position that the devil wanted. And the devil didn't like it. That's why now he's deceiving the woman. He said, God knows that the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You will be like God. They were already like God. But now he's deceiving. Knowing good and evil. And then what happened? The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wife. She took of it and ate and gave to her husband with her. And he also ate. Adam was not deceived. Adam was not deceived. Adam failed to explain the truth to his wife. She had a distorted view of Genesis 3.3. God did not say don't touch it. Adam failed. He had the ability to stop her. He could have stopped the serpent from speaking to her. But he let an intruder in the garden come in and deceive his wife. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 13 and 14 we'll read. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in transgression. Look at this. When you read, some people when they read the scripture, they say, oh, it was, see, it was because of Eve's fault. No, no. You need to understand. The last part of this sentence is common to both. You can read it like this. Adam was not deceived and was in transgression. The woman being deceived was in transgression. Adam was not deceived. He knew the truth. He knew the whole truth. And he willingly disobeyed. But the woman was deceived. But Adam, not so. That's why it says Adam was first formed. He had all the instructions. That's why scripture attributes the fall of man to Adam, not to Eve. But traditional religion would like to blame the woman for it. Men do, don't like to take the blame. They want to blame the woman. Said this woman. Look at what Adam did. Let's go to Genesis 3 again. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees in the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Look at that. Immediately he passed the buck. He passed the blame on to the woman. But who had the authority? Adam. Who knew the truth, the whole truth? Adam. She didn't know. What did she say when the Lord asked her the questions? In verse 13, the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. She acknowledged when the truth hit her, when their eyes were opened, they saw themselves in the natural. They were covered in the glory of God. How come they realized they were naked? How did they realize they were naked? Go to Genesis chapter 2. The last verse, 
and they were both naked. Verse 25. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were naked in the natural. They were naked, but they were not ashamed. They did not have any clothes on them, but they were not ashamed. Why? They had a covering. Their spirit was connected to God. They were in fellowship with God. They walked in the presence of God every single day. Go to Genesis 3 again. What did they hide from? Look at that. Verse 8 says, And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. They hid themselves from the presence of God. That means they were in the presence of God. They had fellowship with God in his presence, in his glory. They were covered in his glory. They did not have a sense of shame. But the moment they disobeyed, their spirit died. Their spirit was separated from the life of God. That's when they saw themselves naked. When that glory was lifted. When their spirit was separated, pulled apart from the life of God. They realized they were naked. Their spiritual eyes closed and their natural eyes opened. When their spirit died, what is left? Soul and body. They started looking in the natural. Their glory covering was removed. Then they looked for natural things to cover themselves. Let's read that. Verse 7 says, They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Or coverings. Why? Because they realized they were naked. They realized that the glory cover that they had was removed. They recognized the lack of a covering. They were covered in the glory of God. That was gone. Now what happened? Let's look at this. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 7 says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked. What does it mean? The eyes of them were opened. Open to the natural. Open to a lower level of being. Their spiritual eyes closed, but their natural eyes opened to themselves. What was the first reaction? Here, they hid themselves from the presence of God. Nakedness. They realized they were naked. And shame and sin consciousness. Sin consciousness. They became unrighteous. Adam was righteous. From righteousness consciousness, he came to sin consciousness. Now they were not able to stand in the presence of God Look at him face to face without any sense of guilt or shame. They couldn't. The reality of what they did hit them. Fear, nakedness, shame and sin consciousness. Those were the immediate manifestations of spiritual death. And then everything changed. The moment Adam disobeyed, another law started operating. That is the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death started operating in man and the world system. Everything. The curse of the law of sin and death started operating on this world. That's when death entered the world system. Everything that was subject to man came under that law. Now the question. Well... When Adam disobeyed, why didn't God destroy Adam and the devil? And then he could have just pressed the reset button and start all over again. Could God have done that? No, he couldn't. But it's a good question. Why didn't he do it? God could have said, ah, no, I'm going to wipe the slate clean, everything, and I'm going to start all over again. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Why? Because God had given the earth legally to man. He gave everything to man. Man was the God of this world. He gave everything to man. Man was supposed to rule, dominate and, uh, uh, and rule over this world. Just like God ruled over the heavens. 
the complete authority of, over the earth was given to man. And Adam had a legal right over the earth. And what did he do? He legally gave it over to the devil. He legally submitted to the devil, knowing the truth, knowing the consequence. Let's look at Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. I'll read it from the Amplified. Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness? I'll read from another translation called the Passion Translation. Don't you realize that grace frees you to choose your own master? But choose carefully for you surrender, listen to this, listen to this. You surrender yourself to become a servant, bound to the one you choose to obey. If you choose to love sin, it will become your master. If, you, if it will own you and reward you with death. That means to whom you submit to obey, you are submitting yourself to them. All the authority that you have, you submit to them. That's what happened to Adam. Adam had complete authority over the earth. God legally gave it to Adam. Now, what did Adam do? Adam submitted it to the devil legally. When he decided, when he chose willingly to obey the words of the devil instead of the words of God, he willingly submitted himself to the authority of the devil. The devil had no authority on the earth. He had no authority. Adam had complete authority. But when he submitted himself to the devil, all the authority that God gave him, he handed it over. He handed it over to the devil. Now what happened? The devil became the God of this world. See, God has never taken advantage of the devil. God and the angels showed, her, showed some respect to, to the devil. Are you saying that God acknowledged devil as an enemy? No, no. God never forces anyone. All the creation that he made, he gave them a free will. Angels had a free will. That's why Lucifer chose to disobey God. Lucifer chose to go against God. God did not force him to submit. No. God is a loving father. He's a gentleman. He does not force any of his creation to do anything. He gave them all free will. So the devil knew if he can get Adam to willingly submit to him, all the authority that Adam had will come to him. The devil knew that. The devil did not have any authority on the earth, had no power, but he knew if he can get Adam to give that authority to him by deception through Eve, she did not have, she did not know the whole truth. When you don't know the truth, you're subject to deception. What did Jesus say? You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. In Hosea, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge of what? The truth. That's why Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Eve did not know the whole truth. That opened her to deception. Now through her, Adam willingly submitted his authority to the devil. Knowing the whole thing. He knew his authority, his power. He submitted himself to the devil by disobeying God and obeying the devil. The moment he obeyed the devil, he just bowed down before him and submitted all the authority that he had legally to the devil. Then the devil became the God of this world. But God, 
did not just wipe everything clean. He had a plan of redemption to legally get it back. In Luke chapter 4, when you read about the temptations of Jesus, one of the temptations, or the last temptation, let's read Luke chapter 4, verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for it is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Amplified says, For it has been turned over to me, and I give it to whomever I will. He was saying the truth when he said, It was given to me. He didn't have it in the first place. It was delivered to him. By whom? By Adam. See, Satan is a liar. But he mixes lie with the truth. That's when it becomes a temptation. The lie part is, I will give it all to you. He had no intention of giving any of this authority to, to Jesus. He wanted to continue to rule. Why, why did he fall in the first place? He wanted it. He desired to be like God. He desired to rule and reign and dominate. But the truth in that was, he said, he admitted that it was delivered to him by Adam. And when it was given to him, he became the God of this world. And scripture actually calls him the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, It says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Scripture, Paul is calling the devil the God of this world. How did he become the God of this world? When Adam gave him the authority. Now he controls the world system. In John 14 verse 30, Jesus calls him the prince of this world. Let's read that. John chapter 14 verse 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. Jesus called him the prince. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, Paul again calls him the prince. Let's read that. Ephesians 2 2, wherein in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. The Amplified says, the prince of the power of the air, you were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, the unbelieving, who go against the purposes of God. It's called the prince of the power of the air. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. He's a thief. He stole it by deception. Every sickness, disease, lack, poverty, stealing, killing, destruction came from him. Where did he get the authority from? Adam, Adam gave him that authority. The authority that God gave him to rule and dominate and bring good, fruitfulness, blessedness on the earth. He handed it over to the devil who used it in the other way. What is the result? 1 John 5, 19 says the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world is under the power of the evil one. That's 1 John 5, 19. So Satan is the God of this world. And he still tempts and sways the people around as he did in the beginning. How did he deceive Eve? What did he do to her? Let's look at that. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Three things. Good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and desired to make one wise. Now keep that there. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Let's read verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Three things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Now compare this to Genesis 3.6. It was good for food, 
lust of the flesh pleasant to the eyes lust of the eyes and desire to make one wise pride of life three things that he used to tempt or to deceive the woman and he is still using the same thing today in the world system lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and pride of life look anywhere around you every category of sin falls under these three things every category of stealing killing destruction falls under this category lust of the flesh lust of the eyes pride of life why do all the wars happen these three things why do people kill each other these three things why do people put other people down these three things lust of the flesh lust of the eyes pride of life he has not changed he uses the same tactics today that's how he rules the world the world system but scripture says he is judged the devil is judged go to john chapter 14 we read verse 30 what did jesus say hereafter i will not talk much with you the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me so he's talking about the devil right now chapter 16 he's talking about the holy spirit now verse 8 when he is come the holy spirit he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and you see me no more of judgment look at that of judgment why because the prince of this world is judged verse 11 in amplified it says and judgment because the ruler evil genius prince of this world satan is judged and condemned and the sentence already is passed upon him he is judged go to revelation chapter 12 we'll read verse 12 therefore rejoice you heavens and you that dwell in them woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time the amplified says he knows that he has only a short time left the devil is judged he's got only a short time left he knows that he knows that that's why in matthew chapter 8 we'll read verse 28 when he was come to the other side into the country of the gergesenes there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs and exceeding fierce so that no man might pass by that way and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with the jesus you son of god are you come hither to torment us before the time they knew they had a time period they had a lease period and god is a gentleman he will not intrude into the lease illegally but the lease has a time time limit satan's rule has a time limit god gave the authority to adam adam gave it to the devil but again it had a time limit a time period and adam uh, sorry and satan knows that his time is running short he knows that his time is limited he knows there is an end what is the end as you continue reading uh, the book of revelation after the uh, after the rapture of the church after the tribulation the devil is put in a bottomless pit for a thousand years and then finally he'll be put in the lake of fire that's his end he has a time period while that while he has that authority that he got from adam he tries to rule and dominate the system everything that he does on the earth the time is running short 2000 years ago when paul when when the apostle john wrote revelation he said he knows his time is short that means we are even closer to it hallelujah let's re- let's do a recap the moment adam sinned he 
was subject to spiritual death. He died spiritually. His spirit was cut off from the life of God. Spiritual death entered mankind. The whole authority that God gave Adam, he legally submitted it to the devil. And through Adam, spiritual death came to all humanity. We see in Genesis 1, man was made in the image and likeness of God. In, let's go to Genesis 5. Genesis chapter 5, let's read from verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them. And call their name Adam in the day when he was when they were created. Now the next verse. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So Adam had a son now, and in whose image was his son? Adam's image. There was a change in Adam's image. He was spiritually dead. The spiritual death dominated his body his physical nature sin ruled in his flesh dominated him and that nature was passed on to mankind so everybody born from adam has adam's nature that's why you don't have to teach a child to sin you don't have to teach a child to disobey where did they get it from from the sin nature that's in their flesh that they were born with. Hallelujah. All right. Let's see the nature of spiritual death. We have a few more minutes. Or uh, yeah, our time is up. Our time is up. So then in the next class, we will look at the nature of spiritual death. What is the characteristics of spiritual death that the Bible talks about? All right. I would encourage you to read Genesis chapter 2 or Genesis chapter 1, 2 and 3 so that you will get a clearer understanding of what happened in the beginning. This is very important. Why? Because as a believer, as a disciple of Christ, people are going to ask you questions. New believers will come to you. They will ask you questions. You should be prepared with an answer. Only then you can help them. To be a disciple means to disciple others as well. You submit to the truth and you help propagate the truth. That's a true disciple. People are going to come to you. Unless, if people are not coming to you with questions, you are not being a true disciple. You are not showing, your life does not show the character of Christ. Only when your life shows Christ, others will be attracted to you. They will come to you with questions. They will ask you, brother, why did this happen? They may come with a mocking attitude. They may come wanting to put you down. But if you have the answer, it will be life-changing. The word of God is a seed that you sow into their life. When you speak the truth, it will force them to think. They may not accept immediately, but as they go, they will be thinking. Hallelujah. I believe you understood this. Let's pray. Father, we praise you. We worship you. We thank you for this time. Thank you that the eyes of our understanding is being enlightened. That we are seeing the truth. We are understanding the truth of what happened. Thank you, Father, that every person under the sound of my voice, they are blessed to be a blessing. That the understanding that they receive will not only help them, but through them help others. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take communion. Like we learned in communion class, communion is a time to remember. Why? Your soul again. There are a lot of things happening around you. Recently, we buried many people. It was heartbreaking. When we went to the cemetery, it was too much for us to handle. The bodies kept piling up. There is death all around us. We are actually living in the season that Psalms 91 talks about. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand. It's literally happening. 
but it didn't stop there. It says, but it shall not come near you. See, you remember it. That's the promise of the word of God. Your children may show symptoms. You yourself may show symptoms. Your spouse, your parents may show symptoms. But don't let fear creep in. Instead, remember what the word says. Remember what the promise of God says. This is the right way to do it. Act of remembrance. So take communion as many times as you require. We take communion multiple times a day. Why? Because multiple times throughout the day, we keep getting messages, information, WhatsApp messages, Facebook. Things are coming, coming at us. Bad news is all around us. But we take time willingly to remember what the broken body and shed blood has done for us. That's what we are doing. The blood has cleansed you from all unrighteousness, declared you the righteousness of God, brought you back to, to in fellowship with God. It has justified you, sanctified you, declared you holy. The broken body of Jesus, by his stripes you were healed. If you were healed, then you are healed right now. You walk in divine health, healing and wholeness. Your body right now has become the temple of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and is giving life to your body. So speak life. Speak life to your, your immune system. Speak life to your central nervous system, your bones, your marrows, your hearts, livers, lungs to breathe, your kidneys, every organ in your body. Speak life. Speak life to your circumstances. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your family members. Speak life. By his poverty, you are made rich. People are going bankrupt all around you. But you declare, by his poverty, I am made rich, so I am rich. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Declare it. Speak it. Do not submit to fear. Hallelujah. The favor of God surrounds you. Wherever you go, you will experience favor. This favor surrounds you like a shield that nobody can come, come close to you, think about you without showing favor. Speak it. Believe and speak it. You've been given the wisdom of God. Christ has become for us wisdom. And Jesus said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask and he will give liberally and without reproach. So receive the wisdom of God. It's your inheritance. Declare angelic protection. Angels guarding you and keeping you all around. These are the benefits of the broken body. Remember them. Speak it. Declare it. All of heaven is a witness. All of earth is a witness. Everything in heaven, on earth and under the earth will obey to the name of Jesus. As you remember these and declare it. Let's do it right now. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord. We choose to remember what the broken body and shed blood of Jesus has accomplished for us. We do not submit to fear. Fear did not come from you. We submit to the good news. The goodness of God. Hallelujah. And this is what has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith in the finished work of the cross. Our faith in what the broken body and shed blood has accomplished. We believe, we receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. It is done. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. We believe we receive everything that you paid for. All things pertaining to life and godliness. It is ours. Because we have the knowledge. We know the exceeding great and precious promises given to us. We take hold of it. We are joint heirs with Christ. We rule and reign and dominate in this life as kings. We are seated at the right hand of God the Father in the heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that can be named. No matter what variant they name it, we are seated far above. Whatever the virus is, whatever the parasite is, whatever the bacteria is, they can come with hundreds and thousands of variants, but we are seated, seated far above that name. 
in the name of Jesus, under our feet, we rule and dominate. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I believe you received this. You are blessed. Thank you for joining. Feel free to invite your friends to join this. This is absolutely free. But if you would like to support this work, you're free to sow into this. I love you. God bless you. Thank you.